What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we previewed the defensive back set to hit free agency in 2023. And full disclosure right off the bat here, because I feel like defensive backs are the position I feel the most comfortable or most uncomfortable ranking players, uh, mostly just because of the information I have to watch and take in CFL games. You don't have that like NFL All-22 um, the CFL doesn't really have an equivalent to that to, you know, watch a game film for people that aren't involved with the league. So, um, you know, there's only so much I can do to uh, do research on defensive backs because it's probably one of the more convoluted positions as it is uh, in trying to uh, make that evaluation. So with that in mind, um, it was very difficult to make a top uh, five or top ten list. Uh, for positions for defensive backs because obviously you have corners, you have halfbacks, you have safeties, and you have uh, the dime slash uh, strong side linebacker. Um, and I feel like there wasn't enough depth at any of those positions in free agency to make uh, individual top fives for them. So what I did was I just did a top 10 regardless of uh, position for defensive backs and uh, we'll see how it goes. So with that in mind, let's just get right into the top 10 I have assembled here. With number one, I have Cameron Kelly of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, had a very big breakthrough season last year. Um, the year before in 2021, it was his first year in the CFL. He found his footing uh, midway through the season and then in the great copy really uh, showed out and would have probably won the um, MVP had the Tire Cats beat the Blue Bombers in that great cup. And then he carried that into last season where I believe he was tied for the league lead in interceptions or right up there. I think he had five of them. Um, one of the lead leaders in pass deflections. Um, just a very impactful player, Swiss Army Knife type of player for that Tiger Cats defense and arguably their defensive MVP this past season. And I think that, you know, there'll be a lot of interest in retaining Cameron Kelly. I do think he is their number one defensive free agent. Um, so I think it's going to be very important for the Tiger Cats uh, to sign a guy that's coming off a great season like Cameron Kelly did last year with Hamilton. And, um, you know, he plays that all-important dime linebacker, strong side linebacker, whatever you want to call it, uh, position. So I think that he would be the number one uh, defensive back free agent available in my opinion and then at number two I have Mike Jones of the Montreal Alouettes a very underrated player in my opinion had a great season this past year in Montreal just made a ton of plays on the ball and I think that um, just the the physical style that he plays with is one thing that really stands out uh, when compared to other defensive backs in the league from his time with Winnipeg um, the last year or so in Montreal, you see that he has a lot of CFL experience. You're seeing um, just the consistency start to show out a lot more for Mike Jones, which I don't think showed as much when he was in Winnipeg. I think that, like I said, he's coming off a great season um, last year, and I think um, uh, he'll be in form for whoever wants to bring him in this offseason. Montreal would like to keep him, I'm sure, but... Um, again, I don't know what's going to happen with that ownership situation in Montreal. There's just too much uncertainty right, right now, and a lot of players are deciding to go elsewhere, it looks like. And then moving on to number three on the list is another strong side linebacker slash dime linebacker, and that's Chris Edwards of the Toronto Argonauts. Um, Edwards had an excellent 2021 season. He was right up there. I believe he was a CFL All-Star that year, and then... Um, obviously, I think there were, he was involved with uh, um, the whole fans clashing in the East Final in 2021 with Hamilton. And so, like, <clears throat> he was suspended to begin last year, so didn't get off on the right foot necessarily. But I think that he still was very productive last year for the Argos. Another one of those guys that can do a little bit of everything, uh, can come on the blitz, be effective in that way as well. And I think that he would be an attractive fit for any team looking to uh, solve that strong side linebacker position. He can also play a bit of safety. We've seen that throughout his career as well. And um, I'm excited to see where Chris Edwards ends up in free agency. I also didn't put any destinations really for uh, this list because um, I just had a tough time uh, deciding who really had a fit. 
Uh, you see a ton of turnover in the defensive back room um, every year in the CFL across the nine teams. So um, I wasn't sure about uh, trying to pick destinations for these guys. Um, now moving on to number four, I have Jamal Roll of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Had some down games last year for the Tiger Cats. I think the matchups with Eugene Lewis he really struggled with. I mean, who wasn't struggling against Eugene Lewis last season? Uh, but there were times that I think he uh, looked a little bit like burnt toast at times. Uh, but I think in general, he's a guy that um, has a lot of talent, has that length that, to play on the outside. He was incredibly promising in 2021 with Hamilton as well. So I think Jamal Roll would be a fit for any team looking to bring in a corner this offseason. And I think Hamilton, um, they have a lot of, you'll see another guy on this list is from the Tiger Cats as well, in addition to Kelly. Um, you know, there's a lot of defensive back free agents for the Tiger Cats. Uh, that's something to keep in mind for uh, the Tiger Cats going into the next couple of weeks here. And then in at number five, we have a former Hamilton Tiger Cat, and that is Delvin Bro of the BC Lions. Now, I don't know if Delvin Bro is going to play this year um, because, you know, obviously he came out of retirement to play last year with BC. But I think he was just really solid last year with the Lions, uh, contributing to a really solid defense. And I think that if he plays, um, he would be just that kind of player again. It's just the consistency is shown as a CFL corner. Then moving on to number six, we have Siante Evans of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Getting up there a little bit in age, but I think he had perhaps his best season in years uh, this past season with Hamilton. Led the league in pass deflections despite missing a handful of games. If he had stayed healthy, he would have ran away with it and maybe been an all-star uh, last season. So I think that Siante Evans has been an all-star in the past. Played like it last season, and maybe um, you know he has another All Star season left in him in 2023. So I think if Hamilton wants to retain him, I'm sure they're you know making some offers to him. But I don't know um, you know with all these guys available uh, in terms of uh, their own free agents in the defensive back room. Don't know what the priority list is here. I think, like I said, I would try to sign Kelly out of any of them. Uh, but I think uh, Roll, being a younger player, is probably being prioritized more by the Tire Cats. And uh, Deontay Evans may be a guy that actually hits the market in the end. Now, moving on to number seven, we have Nick Taylor of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. A halfback, the first halfback to appear on this list. Um, some of these guys can move around and play uh, you know, with a little bit more versatility. But Taylor, more of a halfback um, that we've seen at the the CFL level with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Just a solid veteran um, player that has been in the league for a number of years. You know what you're getting from Nick Taylor. He'll bring a little bit of physicality to the table as well. Um, and I think he would be a good addition if he um, left Winnipeg for any team looking to sign him. Now moving on to number eight, we have Brandon Dozier of the Calgary Stampeders. A very versatile player can play a little bit of that dime linebacker position, but I think he's best as a safety, um, you know, where he can just uh, take advantage of that physical aspect of his game. Heavy hitting player, can play special teams as well. Always a guy that will, you know, contribute in that regard as well. So I think Calgary, um, you know, they do have some young Canadian players back there in the secondary that they may want to try out and, uh, you know, in one of those starting roles. Uh, so maybe Brandon Dozier is going out the door here, but I think that he would be a good fit for any team looking for a safety slash um, dime linebacker this offseason. Then at number nine, we have a Darius Pickett of the Montreal Alouettes, another one of these dime linebackers that I think had a really strong season this past year in Montreal. I just think that, you know, um, um, he's just a very dynamic player in terms of, uh, the playmaking ability, and um, he could also contribute on kick returns as well. Um, so I think he's a very interesting player to look out for. And then the final guy I have in the top 10 is Shaq Richardson of the Toronto Argonauts, who I listed as a halfback, but he has played all over throughout his CFL career at the defensive back positions. And I think that he's just a very solid veteran to have. I think he's had a really strong last couple of years in Toronto. Uh, being part of a very good defense there. So I think that these are the 10 best defensive backs available, regardless of position, 
going into free agency. But there's also a lot of other guys available, such as Carfalo Exame of the Montreal Alouettes. Mostly just a pure special teams guy, but one of the best special teams specialists in the league. A uh, Canadian player that um, helps with the ratio there. Greg Reed of the Montreal Alouettes was once their best and most promising defensive back prospect, uh, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to stick around. I don't know what the priorities, uh, like I said, are with some of these teams. Maybe Mike Jones and um, Darius Pickett are more high priorities for the Alouettes to re-sign. Ahmed Thomas, who um, played a little bit of strong side linebacker, a little bit of um, <clears throat> a regular linebacker, I do believe, last season as well for the Alouettes. Um, just not too much to say about him. Sherrod Baltimore, coming off a very good season with the Ottawa Red Blacks this past year. Been with them for a number of years. I think if he plays in the CFL next year, probably is with uh, the Red Blacks. Abdul Kenna, um, a fan favorite in Ottawa, uh, had the interception in the 2016 Great Cup against Calgary. But getting up there in age, defensive back is a position that usually hits uh, players hard as they age. So... Um, it may be time for the Ottawa Red Blacks to move on there. He used to play in Toronto, so that's a destination to look out for for him. Antoine Pruneau of the Ottawa Red Blacks, former All-Star safety, um, who is a Canadian player, but um, is one of their longest tenured players. I believe he is the Ottawa's longest tenured player, uh, but he has really struggled when he's been in a starting role the past couple of seasons. Probably a really good uh, backup safety to have. But I think that in terms of his starting days, I wouldn't want to personally bring him in uh, to start for my defense as one of my seven Canadian starters. And then you have Mercy Maston of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, just a solid uh, player that has seen some playing time over the past couple of years. Nothing too special there, but maybe he lands with the team. Lace Brown of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, kind of the same deal there. Uh, played the first couple of years of his CFL career in Saskatchewan. We'll see if he lands a starting job somewhere in the CFL. Godfrey Onyeka of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a Canadian kid that uh, uh, has brothers in the CFL. But I think that, you know, in terms of the opportunities, uh, he hasn't really gotten the chance to truly start a lot of games in the CFL. You have Mike Edom, the safety for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, been in the league for a long time. But I think the best days for him are behind him. He's getting up there in age, but maybe he is a good addition. I'd rather him be brought in than Antoine Pruneau, personally. Ellie Buka of the Calgary Stampeders, a guy that has shown some flashes, started a game or two here or there, but um, just hasn't really gotten that full-time opportunity. Um, would be interesting guy to bring in for a team that's thin at uh, defensive back in terms of their Canadian guys. Marcellus Branch and JV and Elliott for the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, two guys that just did not play that much the past couple of seasons with the Stampeders. Maybe they get a bigger opportunity elsewhere, but maybe they're just guys that won't be in the league next season. Tremaine Washington, who was recently released by the Calgary Stampeders, played very well after coming over from Edmonton in, um, you know, actually a, a release scenario there. And I think that he will find a fit somewhere in the league if he's not playing in one of these other leagues um, this offseason. And um, should be very interesting to see what happens with Tremaine Washington. I believe in 2021, he was tied to the league lead in uh, interceptions in the shortened season. And then you have Deron Carter of the Edmonton Elks, who was released there. Um, just a terrible experiment for the Elks last season. Just never really quite found his footing and you know had some terrible situations where he just couldn't make the tackles. He looked like a receiver out there, so... I don't think Deron Carter will be in the league any longer. Tristan Decoud of the Edmonton Elks, another surprise release there for the team. Had a promising 2021 with Toronto, but um, this past year was traded to Edmonton and he just never really, uh, I guess, caught the eye of Chris Jones, the head coach there for the Elks. And then Jeff Richards, another uh, veteran defensive back for the Edmonton Elks. Um, don't know if this is the end of the line for his CFL career. Um, will be interesting to see. And then the final guy here is Hakeem Johnson of the BC Lions, a Canadian kid that's just been a depth defensive back there for the Lions the past couple of seasons. 
Um, maybe he gets his opportunity somewhere else in the CFL, or maybe if he stays, maybe BC flips around one of those positions and makes uh, one of those defensive back positions uh, starting uh, Canadian position next year. But should be interesting to see with all these defensive backs available. I think it was one of the hardest uh, videos to do in this series just because it's hard to, like I said, really rank a lot of these guys. I wish we had, you know, PFF grades for uh, the CFL because I think that would. Um, really give us a lot more context for how these guys are playing. Offensive line is the other position that's really difficult to evaluate, but defensive backs, we just don't even have the proper camera angles to really evaluate uh, how they are playing and, uh, you know, just going off a lot of the statistics, just the eye test, uh, you know, the ball skills that a lot of these uh, defensive backs have. That's basically how I had to come to a determination of how to make the top 10 here. You guys will just have to let me know where you think everybody's going in free agency. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.